Okay, this is a follow-up video to the last video I did on my mother-in-law's off-grid tiny house. Um, she purchased some property um, in a rural area that does not have utility service and asked if I could figure out a way to help give her power. Um, the house that she has, her tiny house, was built by a high school as a year-long senior project uh, to teach the, the uh, students construction. So it's got traditional AC wiring, it's got traditional plumbing in it. Um, and so she put it on this property and then she bought a shed, uh, a small utility shed that's uh, just adjacent to the house. And then asked that I help. So what I did is I got online and I helped her pick out a solar system. Uh, we bought a kit, it was a Renogy uh, four panel kit that came with the Wanderer solar charger. It got pretty good reviews, and so we went with that. Um, I also bought all of the miscellaneous parts and pieces to kind of give her the idea that I came up with, and I don't know if this is gonna work well or not, um, but this is kind of what we're gonna go with and, and, and start. Um, but she already has a generator. It's a tri-fuel um, champion generator, um, and it's got this, uh, what is this called? I always forget the name of it, a 30P plug with the three prong, the locking plug. And um, so what we're going to do here is we're gonna give her the ability to choose between solar power or generator power. And so it's really basic. You know, she'll have a bank of batteries somewhere on the floor. This all is gonna be installed in her shed. And then I'm gonna run a conduit from the shed underground over to her house where it'll connect to her house's panel. Um, so if she's on solar, the solar panels, which I'll drill a hole right here to run the panel wire, will um, feed into the charge controller. And the charge controller, through this box, will um, go over and charge the batteries. And then the batteries will feed the inverter, and the inverter's AC comes up and goes into the panel. I've got the, the uh, ground bonded uh, to the chassis of the panel. And then I've got, now I know I'm going to take some heat for this, but I'll explain myself. I've got uh, on this breaker, I've got the hot going into one end of that one, and then the neutral going into the other. Um, and then uh, this post here will be the hot, and this will be the neutral. And I'm only going to send the two wires through the conduit all the way over to her house. The reason that I'm doing that is because the house has traditional house wiring where the neutral and the ground are bonded in the panel. The inverter, the ground, and the um, neutral are not bonded, whether the inverter is on or off. Same thing goes for the generator. So it's acting as though it's uh, an RV or a, a boat. Um, so shore power uh, actually doesn't apply here because uh, we're never in a situation where we're going to need to bond our neutral and ground. So I'm trying to figure out if I can do that without hurting any of the equipment, the generator, the, the inverter. So I'm going to send two wires, uh, the hot and the neutral, over to the house. And then I'm going to put a ground rod in the ground uh, at the house. I'm also going to do a ground rod out here at the panel, and I'm going to bond the all the chassis, all the, you know, kind of a safety ground, uh, to the uh, to another ground rod. I don't know that the two ground rods will create any kind of electrical loop, but I'm trying to do the best that I can with what I'm given um, in this situation. Um, so it's really simple. Inverter feeds the panel out to the, out to the house, uh, or the generator feeds the panel out to the house. And then depending on which service you want, you just simply flip the switch. It disconnects one and connects the other. So that's very simple. Uh, this other box here, and I described this a little bit in my last video, uh, that's to control what's charging the batteries. So if the solar system for some reason is not keeping up and she needs to plug in the generator, she can leave the panel alone and run off the batteries in the inverter, or she can flip it over and run off the generator. But this device allows her to choose whether it's the generator with this charger charging the batteries, or if it's the solar system. And the way this works, I'm kind of I'm kind of proud of what I came up with here, even though it's a very simple circuit. Um, but I have two buttons here, a green and a red, and then a little light. And then if I open this panel up inside, um, I've got uh, two relays. The first relay on the left is for uh, distributing AC power to the system here inside this panel. Uh, and then the, the relay on the right takes the 
charge positive and negative from the uh, solar system and the positive and negative from the AC charger and um, decides which one is going to go out to the actual panel. So the, this is what, or to the batteries rather. So this is going to be the positive and negative that run all the way down to the batteries that will be on the, on the floor of the shed. And so the way this system works, it's really simple. I press green, the green button here. And right now I've got these wires that go up to an extension cord and it plugs into the wall back there so that I can pretend that my generator is running and hooked in. So when the generator is on, you press the green, the light lights up, it engages this relay, which uh, the button temporarily sends AC power to the coil on this. Once this relay is engaged, then it takes the AC power and sends it to itself, meaning it stays engaged. You only have to tap the button once. It also engages this relay that then changes from the solar to that. It just flips and now the um, AC is charging the batteries. Uh, and then when you're done, and the reason I designed the circuit that way, you can always hit stop and now it flips back and now you're back on solar. Or if it's on and you happen to lose AC power, it automatically toggles back. And then, so the idea is that if her generator runs out of fuel and she's not monitoring, the house will go dark if she's running on generator power to the house, but the batteries will always be receiving a charge, whether it's from the, the AC system to bring them back up as quickly as possible or from the solar system. So it will fail to the solar system is kind of what I did. So I kind of like that idea. It's pretty simple circuit. Um, but you know, it seems like the wiring is a little more complex than it needed to be just to get that simple function. So the only next step that I have is to take this entire board, load it in a car, drive it all the way up to her property, install it. I've already marked out the studs. Her shed is 16 on center. So I've got one, two, three, four studs that it's going to mount to. And then I have to make the other battery terminals uh, for the bank of batteries. And then I have to install the entire solar system. And I plan on using Unistrut for the framework. I need to get it high enough that she can, or that the snow won't necessarily affect it because she does get heavy snowfall, but I need to make it low enough that she can reach it with a broom to sweep it off when it does snow. So anyway, that's my basic system. I appreciate any feedback you guys give me. Um, because of the whole neutral bonding at the panel, not bonding at the panel, grounds, I don't know what the best way is to do this. So this is the way I'm going to start with. I figure I can always um, unbond the ground in the neutral at the house, but I know that that may create a risk. But both the inverter and the generator that will sit right next to this, plug it into there, uh, neither one of them are grounded. They're all floating. It's like, it's like an RV. So I don't know... Um, and, and her house itself sits on wheels. It's a, it's a kind of a portable tiny house. Um, anyway, this is what I came up with. So like I said, I appreciate any feedback you can give me. Um, I did draw this out before I decided to put this together. Um, I just drew it on my OneNote to kind of see. Uh, I moved all the parts and the pieces around quite a bit so that I could get the wiring to be efficient so that I didn't have to crisscross. Oh, and I guess I should mention that right here, I'm putting a little project box. And the project box is going to have three voltmeters in there with momentary buttons next to each one. So she can press one and it will tell her what the um, battery power is, what the voltage is of the batteries. And then I'll give her some thres threshold so she knows if she needs to run the generator or not. Um, it'll also do the solar output or the, the panel output so that she can see what her panels are producing. And we'll have to establish some thresholds there. Uh, and then the last one would be the AC, I think. Um, I don't know... I mean, three meters, she might not need to know what the AC is, but I notice that the inverter puts out a rock steady uh, 117 volts, no matter how you power it, um, whether it's off one battery, four batteries, or in my case, I was using a little jump starter just for testing. So I'll have to figure all that out. But anyway, that's what I came up with. Like I said, I appreciate any comments or feedback and, uh, and thanks for watching my video.